said no, be told. Hang on, just listen, will you? Look, you want to rob your stupid bank, you do without me, OK? I'm not talking balaclavas or sawn off shotguns. It's there for the taking, and me and you walk away with pockets full of cash. So what's the problem? I've got better things to do. Oh, like what? Sneaking round your married woman's gaff, wetting yourself for husband to come home and catch us. Well, at least I won't be panicking about the busies turning up. Shift your foot, will you? So that's it, then? You leave me on my own? Yeah. Fair enough. You've had your chance. So when it comes to the next job, I won't be cutting you in, either. Don't even know why I bothered this time. Apart from the fact that you're my mate. Never expected you to wimp out, though. I'm not wimping out. Yes, you are. And you know what? I'm glad you're not coming, because I don't need you or your whinging. I can do this job better on my own. Is he? Oh, he's asleep. Oh, but a kip will do him good. Yeah. Uh, I just want to drop this card off. Oh, thanks. I've just brought some on myself for me, Mum. Here's Josh, how are you? No, oh, he's still downstairs, waiting for them to take the cast off his leg. Do you know what? Two hours we've been here. They haven't even looked at him yet. Scan must that. Wouldn't mind, but I'm in work soon. I'm gonna have to take him home again the way things are going. Oh yeah. Oh Mike says he had to cancel babysitting for you, didn't he? Yeah. Only to be expected that. I mean he's spending half his life here at the moment, isn't he? Same as you. I'd made to try to find someone else, sir. So. Well, what about Rachel? Well, I dare not ask. She's got Beth, hasn't she? As well as you two. I'm sure she wouldn't mind under the circumstances. Well, it would be brilliant. Even if it was just for a couple of hours, but I'd rather you asked her than me. <laughs> Is he going to be all right? Yeah, you know what he's like. Never gives up anything without a face. Let's not go and phone Rachel for you. Do you mind if I stay here for a few minutes? No, of course I don't. You're amazed that you came to visit him. I won't be long. I'm going to cut my credit card up. I believe it when I see it. There's a new tap? Yeah, I got it a couple of weeks ago. How much? Um, I'll tell you in a sec. It's only here somewhere. Oh, 19.99. It was reduced from 25 quid. Bargain, eh? Yeah, what until you paid the interest on it. I know. I can't believe how much they charge. Well, you're better off paying cash. Well, I can go a couple of days without touching real money. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. That's why I'm always buying the milk. <laughs> It's weird because my salary gets paid into my account and then most of my bills are on standing orders when everything else I pay for using my card. Yeah, I'm buying a purse for your birthday then, eh? I mean, how did people live before plastic? I mean, they must have been walking around with big wads of cash in their pockets. I mean, my mum used to give the housekeeper in a jam jar, do you remember? Every Friday waiting on my dad's wages before she could do the big shop. I mean, what's it going to be like for our loose generation? Oh, they'll have all that smart card stuff and where they read your eyes with scanners. Oh, well, that'd be no good for me. Not after a night on the ale, cos my eyes are always bloodshot. I'd be in the red all the time. <laughs> I would and all. <laughs> and I'll be all right, won't she? I don't want her to die. Just cos an ambulance came for someone she's dying. <sighs> Why won't he tell us what's wrong with her? Well, that's why they're doing the test, to see if they can find out. Oh, well, can we not just go in and see her? In a minute, the nurse said, when they've made her comfortable. Give me a bell, go in and see her. I'm going to take you in, OK? You might find it a bit upsetting to see her in the way she is. She was really confused when I came out. And there's lots of old ladies in there with her in the same ward. And they're all, well, they're all really poorly. So you just stick close by me, your Dad, OK? I'm sure you need to be made up to see her. Did you get through? Not to Anna Dell. But I left her another voicemail. I mean, what's she like, eh? We can't contact her when we need to. She's probably too busy enjoying herself. She didn't even phone for her exam results. She must have forgotten because she was enjoying herself so much. What about Steve? Voicemail. I told him where we are, what we're doing. I said we'd phone him if we've got any news. Why can't we go in? In a minute, I said, when the nurse is finished. She was really dehydrated when they brought her in. She's been on a drip ever since. Any results from the test? Still another hour, they reckon. Maybe longer. Any clues as to what it could be? I was thinking maybe she'd had a stroke. You know, the way she's been so confused. Yeah, they'd know if it was a stroke, wouldn't they? Then I was thinking it was like Alzheimer's or something. Or that senile dementia. Only I never thought that came on so fast. I thought that took years. I think maybe we should just be a bit patient. See what the tests say. Yeah, I know. All we can do is hope for the best. Keep saying our prayers. Come on. Where are we going? I'm treating you to an early lunch. 
Oh, I was just gonna have a sandwich. Well, you can still have one in the bar on me. Well, I've just put a wash in. Well, it doesn't need you to watch it going round. Anyway, we'll be back before it finishes. I thought you'd have jumped at the chance of me paying for a change. Oh, I would have done if you ever been in a state of shock. Can our phone ringing? Well, let it ring. Well, it might be Nick for me. Sir, we can leave a message. Come on, I'm starving. Where's Luke? He's with Dan, kicking a ball around the park. Oh, lucky Luke. I know. Otherwise, he would have had to come shopping with me. He hates that. And lucky me. I get an hour away from him. That's the thing about kids. You never have a minute to yourself. Unless you've got a really good grandma or grandpa in hand. Or a Dan. We do our best. Is there something else we could use instead of grandma and grandpa? Oh, Darby and Joan? I don't know what I'd do without you. You've had a tough time the last couple of months, haven't you? Tell me about it. Well, you know what they say. There's no such thing as failure, only success and learning. My marriage was a failure and a learning experience, so I got two for one. Do you think Sean's learnt anything from it? I don't know. Maybe what it feels like when he can't get his own way, when someone stands up to him. It's not a bad thing to learn. Were you and Dad ever close to splitting up? What a question! Were you? How long have you got? Well, I could be round in 20 minutes. Under the sheets in 22, how does that sound? I'm still at home. Just had some head kicks round, wanted me to do some mad job for him, so blew him out. Which leaves me free for the rest of the day. Yeah, I'm on my way. Where's my in here? To make a better love. Stuck something in my hand. I don't know what they're trying to do to me. Make you better, that's all. There's nothing wrong with me. Did I get the wrong bus? You're in the hospital, Mum. Hi, Bridge. We've come to see you. Oh, fine. Now it's all over. Mum, you've not been well. They're doing some tests to see if they can find out what's happened. I'll tell you what's happened. I'm in the wrong house. Yeah. I don't live here. Yeah. Shouldn't you be at mass? How long before you've got to be at the police station? I've got a good hour yet. Did they say it's all right for you to be here? Why don't you take Anthony down the cafe? Get him some dinner. Sounds good to me, eh, son? Come on, let's go and feed our faces. Who let you in? Put me out a nice sandwich, eh? I'm going to sit with you in for a bit. See what the nurse says when she's free. She's in the wrong bed again, poor soul. She doesn't know whether she's coming or going. Hi, you love. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. I was only resting my eyes. Yeah, well, you carry on, eh? I was just going. I've got Josh downstairs waiting to get that cast off his leg. So why are you up here then? I wanted to see how you are. It's very good of you. Yeah, well, I was worried about you. Been through a lot together, haven't we? <laughs> We've had our fair share, eh? And what do we keep doing, eh? We keep bouncing back again, just like you're bouncing back now. Well, I'm giving it my best shot. Yeah, well, you carry on. Get yourself better. Bill, just listen, will you? I've tried to phone them at the Aussie. They must have the phone switched off. So if they call you, tell them I got the voicemail and I'll leave my phone switched on. If we didn't get any worse, they can let me know. Oh, Tim wanted some help on something. Jibbed them off, though, left them to it. I've got a servicing job on instead. She'll keep me busy for the rest of the day. Is it another secret you've kept from me? But it was something that never happened. Look, I suggested it to Sylvia, fine. But she didn't go through with the abortion, so there was nothing to tell. I'm sure there's loads of things I suggested which weren't done. I mean, do you want me to tell you all of them? I mean, I, I suggested we went to New Brighton once for the bank holiday. But can I tell you something? We never did. I don't know how you can trivialise something like this. No! 
If you do get to see Romy, send him my love. Yeah, of course we will. And Bridget. If she's well enough for visitors. Poor thing. It must have been serious for the ambulance to come. It's been a heart attack and a stroke or something like that. Sorry, were I interrupting something? Nothing that won't keep. Come on, let's go and do our duty. Whose is that? It's yours. It is not. It's the brush you use every day. Why do you keep tormenting me like this? I'm not. I'm just trying to... Look at her. She's off again. Should be in someone else's bed in the middle. As long as it isn't mine. I'll keep tight hold of this. She'll be rummaging again in a minute. This should tie her to the bed. She's a menace. I should not get it now. The thing about me and your dad is, and I know this is going to sound really old-fashioned, but we stuck it out through the bad times, because that's what people of his parents' generation did. It's completely different with your age group, though. You've seen the divorce rate go sky high. I sometimes wonder if that's what me and Sean should have done. Just stuck it out. For the kids' sake. Your dad said you're wary of letting Sean see Luke. Can you blame me? I'm only wondering if that's right for Luke in the long term. I mean, where is he now? Out in the park with Dan, not his real dad. Because I can trust Dan. I'm not telling you what you should be doing, love. You can do what you like as long as it's for the right reasons and if it's for Luke's own good. But if you're doing it to punish Sean, you've got to think whether that's right for Luke or not. For work. Jackie didn't call you, didn't she? Yeah, it's fine. He'll be okay with me for a couple of hours. Oh. Thought you were having your cast off. Oh, three hours they kept us there. We had to give up in the end. Oh, poor you, eh? Oh, no, we'll just have to have it done tomorrow, won't we, Hall? I'm sorry. So you can manage for one more day. Oh, of course he will. It won't stop itching. thinking I could end up looking after my mum before I even had a chance to have a baby of my own. Come here. And if I have to look after her, I mean, what state will she be in? She might even be able to dress herself or feed herself. She might not even know who I am. I mean, I'm her own daughter. Oh, come on. The test results are due any minute. Let's just wait and see what they turn up. Yeah, I know. I'm OK. Just needed a minute. You should be gone by now. You don't want to keep the police waiting. I think they'll understand, given the circumstances. Yeah, but still, you don't want to be late. Be glad when they're there, all they want to wear off you. That's not a problem. Hey, and you're the only one who's worrying, even when there's nothing to worry about. It'll be just like the last time. Routine. Yeah. Bound to be, in it.
you sure, Dad, you'll be OK if I go and get something to eat? Of course I will. I'm in safe hands with these two. I wouldn't bank on that. Will you be uh, going to the shop? I thought I would, yeah. I'll get him some grapes, will you? I like grapes. <laughs> Ray. Oh, sorry, Ron. You're all right. Only I just want to laugh. Well, stop laughing, then. Well, there's no hope if you can't laugh. Look, I think I'll leave you to it. Now, you be careful you don't burst them stitches, you. We won't make him laugh, promise. Or split his sides. <laughs> you carry on, Ray. I'm in need of a good tonic. Oh, I would have brought the gin if I'd have known that. <laughs> I'm still in one piece. Just out of practice laughing, that's all. Well, laughter's the best medicine, they say. Tell you something, though. There's not a lot to smile about in here. The staff are marvels, you know. They're always having a giggle. I bet they are. Especially when they're giving you a bed bath. <laughs> your front door keys for the house. I gave Dan mine in case he was back before me. I'll have to get some more cut. It's mad. This is your dad's I've got and he's ended up without one. Who's got yours? I don't know. Holly, Stuart. Kirsty could have taken it away with her for all I know. I'll kill her when she gets back. She promised to keep in touch and she hasn't. She's busy enjoying herself. She doesn't even phone for her A-level results. Liverpool Uni have been on wanting her to confirm her place. Well, she'll contact them direct, won't she? I hope so. I don't want her missing out. If she's got the chance of a place, she should be taking it. She'll be fine. I don't know how you've coped over all these years, bringing up four kids. Make that five with your dad. Well, it's bad enough with one. You just get used to it after a while, I suppose. I'll tell you what I'd like a pound for, though. Every nappy I changed, every little vest I washed, every pair of shoes I watched you lot grow out of. I wouldn't need to win the lottery. What about all the tears you've dried? What about all the tears I cried? Never mind dried. I really envy you and my dad, you know. Staying together after all these years puts me and Sean to shame. In four years. Just been dead lucky, I suppose. Well, so what am I? Unlucky. Or well, stupid for marrying him in the first place. You can't go back now, love. That's ancient history. But what you've got to decide is are you making Luke pay for your marriage messing up or Sean? I don't believe this. What's up? Louise has been trying to phone me. What did she want? Well, I don't know. All she got was this stupid answer phone. Well, did she sound OK? You can just hear the operator checking the line. Oh, she must be OK. Someone else would be making the call if she wasn't. Yeah, but she usually has a phone. She never reverses the charges. Yeah, I know that's what I said I'd do. It's this pile of scrap that's the problem. Would have had the job done by now that worked. Fix it. No sweet nothing about engines. Yeah, I said that before I knew the state this thing was in. Will you listen to what I'm oh, You are joking. Right, Beth, we're going to set this picnic up. Come on, you bring your teddy. Oh, it ain't not again! Yeah, well, next time, Lou, only reverse the charges if it's something really serious. You have me heart in my mouth, then. Anyway, what are you going to tell Tanya's dad? That I'll get back to him tomorrow, right? OK. Good girl. All right, love you loads. Speak to you then. Bye. Bye for now. Bye. Well, I have a guess what was so urgent. Something about a holiday. Yeah, Tanya's dad needs to know if she can go or not ASAP. Oh, what a sudden rush. Well, he said that Tanya needs more time to find a mate who can go if she can't. And you just put it off again. Well, what else was I going to do? She called me on the hop. You could have just said no. But I don't want to say no, though. I mean, I'd love Louise to have a holiday. Why did she have to pick Tanya as a best mate? Why couldn't she have picked someone whose dad works in a bank instead of robbing them? Oh, I did. Oh, woman, she was laughing.
nothing. Next he was like this. What? Are you okay? Get an ace quick. I'm on the way. I'll be okay. Can I do something? Well, you've got to get an ace quick if I start. That's more be in a minute. You're telling me he's coughing up blood? Steve, it's Tim. Look, I've got this truck and it's broken down. I need you. Yeah, I know I said that before, but I need you now. Look, the engine's cut out on me. It's completely dead. Because you're my mate. Oh, please, Steve, come and fix it, will you? I'm desperate here, mate. Help me out, will you? Stay where you are. We'll let you know if she gets any worse. You haven't got a clue, have you? Why do you think he's knocked? He didn't phone home for your exam results. She's texted you with him. But why didn't you let us know? No, like I said, stay put. We're expecting the test results any minute. I'm sorry, Nan. I never meant to make any of this happen. Saying your prayers for me, love. What's up with her? Okay, it cut out and wouldn't start again, and now it's totally dead. I like your brain. Eh? He really likes me. And I really like him. Look, Rach, I'm not getting at you. I'm just saying what Max would say if he's seen them like this. I'm back to normal. Great. You're mobile again. Flamin' out, what are you doing? Find out on Brookside tomorrow at 8. Next tonight, we all want value for money, but sometimes the art of compromise comes into play to Property Hotspot Norfolk for location, location, location. Deep breath and cough. into your fast. You're back down the bingo before you know what they said. Are you sure? I thought I was at death's door. She's not the only one, is she? Oh. I don't like those curtains. Any chance of a cup of tea?
That's a long word. And you're right. It does begin with the letter A. And Louise expecting you to call her back? Tomorrow. And meanwhile, she'll have Tanya nagging at her and Tanya will have her dad on her back. And poor Lou's stuck in the middle, hasn't got a clue what's going on. You've just got to be firm with her. If you don't want her to go, tell her she can't go. But she's got a heart set on it, though. Then tell her she's got ahead of herself and you're still worried about Tanya's family. Oh, yeah, just like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Louise, but I think your best mate's dad's a gangster and I don't want you going to the Costa del Crime with him. It is. What are you putting on? Viva España. Ow! Yes, sir. Well, then, you little beautiful. I'm a mug. Look, I just cut those on me. Oh, I'm not even gonna ask. Look, come on, I just won't start. But what's up with her? That's why you're here. You tell me. You just tell me what went wrong with it. Look, it cut out and wouldn't start again, and now it's totally dead. Like your brain, eh? Poor old Ron. He's really going through it, isn't he, eh? Coughing up blood can't be good for him. Well, it's better out than in, you know. Oh, by the way, I saw Tom Carroll's wife before. You know, from the bingo. It's arthritis. Makes you think, doesn't it, eh? The frailty of the human body. You know, old age creeping up on you, taking its toll. I hate hospitals. I always feel I'm going to catch something. We don't catch old age, Jess. You get it regardless. Hiya. Well, hiya. That was good timing. Go and tell your mum quick. Come on. Go on, tell me what. She just scored ten penalties past me. <gasps> on the trot, ten penalties, Ruth. Oh, did you? Oh, what a star, eh? What a star. You can wash hands for me. OK. Go on, quick as you can. Oh, thanks for taking him to the park. Hey, it's no problem. I enjoyed it. Thought it'd give you a bit of space as well. Do you know what? I think I've actually tired him out, Ruth. <laughs> With any luck, you'll have a nap after dinner. <laughs> what have you been up to, then? Oh, a bit of shopping. Had to chat with my mum. What, a chat-chat? Not a casual chat? Uh, sort of. Uh, my dad's are worried about Luke. Says he's missing out by not seeing Sean. Well, they're probably right, you know. Oh, even though Sean started drinking. Ruth, I think I'd have started drinking if I was him. You must be at rock bottom, and I should know. I mean, that's how I felt when you bin me off. I didn't even have any kids. Oh, don't say that. You know, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's not go back. I know what he means, though. I mean, Sean's his real dad, and when I think about my dad and what it would have felt like growing up without him, we'd have lost out on so much. So is it just Sean's drinking that you're worried about? Yeah, mainly. You know what, Ruth? If if I'd have been split up from my son and I got to see him regularly, I think that'd stop me drinking, you know? I think probably I'm gonna let Sean see Luke. So what if Luke doesn't want to see Sean? <laughs> well, he mentions him all the time. Drew a picture last night and said it was his dad. That's because he is his daddy. And I'm not, and I'm not being funny, Ruth, but I never will be. See, in the end, you have to do what you think is right for Luke. And whatever that is, I'll stand by you. Are you sure we shouldn't call in on Bridget to see how she is? No, she won't want us poking our noses in. Not when she's poorly. Oh, it puts your life in perspective, doesn't it, hey, this place? All those old people in hospital and that. You're nothing like your health, are you? I don't know how our Nick is generational manage. At least most healthcare is still free for our generation. We should realise how vulnerable you are, though. Thinking you might have to pay out like Ron almost had to. Well, you'll be all right. You've got all the cash you saved from those shares of yours. You'll be covered. I saved that money to enjoy myself in my old age, not to have to fork out for some operation or something. And you know what makes me really mad? All these people who've never saved a penny, and then they can claim all kinds. Whereas people like me, who've scrimped and saved until they can't have a penny because they've got savings. It's criminal. I brought a few of your own things in for you. Oh, Anthony was really upset, you know, seeing so poorly. Oh, man. Will he be all right, then, to the shop on his own? The one thing he can do without any help is buy sweets. <laughs> I thought you might prefer this to hospital issue. Oh, I'm so glad you brought this in. Hey, I'm not ready for the candlewick yet, you know. <laughs> you get a bit of colour back in your cheeks, you know. Them antibiotics must be doing your power good. Yeah, I can feel they are. Can't believe all this, you know. The ambulance, all the fuss. All for an infection at me waterworks. Such a relief, that's all it was. Didn't know what was happening to me. It's got some very strange symptoms. I thought you'd had a stroke or something. And you know the scariest thing? I have no memory of being brought in here. Nothing? Nothing at all. When I realised where I was, I thought my time had come. Hey, enough of that. 
You've got years ahead of you yet. Well, I'd always hoped so. But something like this. I mean, look at me. I'm in a geriatric ward. This is what I've got to look forward to. I don't feel I've even hit middle age yet. You'll be out of here in no time, back to your gallivanting about. Well, however long it takes, it won't be soon enough to get me out of here. Do you know, I'm feeling a lot better. Do you think they'd let me out today? Let's just see what the doctor says, eh? Oh, well, I suppose they won't keep me in any longer than necessary. They need the bed for someone who's really poorly and old. <laughs> so what's wrong with her? I'll tell you when I know. Who owns this place? Who cares? I don't know, someone won't just turn up. Because it's been abandoned for ages. How long is this going to take? Well, it depends. Oh, aye. Typical mechanic. Anything to string the job out, make a few bob. Oh, getting paid, am I? I thought I was doing this as a favour. What's that? That's why I can't doubt on you. The few lines are full of air. So you can fix it? Maybe for a price, yeah. Are you sure that you'll be OK if I go? I'll be fine. And you don't want me to phone Anthea? Hey. If she was interested in me, she'd have been in touch since she left. All I ever got was a welcome home card. So why should she be bothered now just because I'm stuck in here? Well, he's sure you don't need anything. Jackie, just go and pick up little Harry and Emma, will you? <laughs> All right, I'll give him a big kiss from you, OK? Hey, you're dead lucky having Rachel man on him, aren't you? I mean, at least you know they're in safe hands. Well, in some ways, yeah, but she doesn't exactly stretch them, Dad. Well, you turned out all right, and you weren't exactly stretched as a kid. Hmm. I don't know, maybe I'm just being too fussy. Yeah. Or maybe it's Maxie's influence rubbing off on you, eh? You're not turning all middle class on your half fella, are you? Don't be daft, of course I'm not. I just want what's best for me kids. And me dad. Mwah. So, if you start coughing like that again, you get in touch with the nurse straight away. Jacqueline, would you just go, please? OK. Oh, I'll see you later and be good. Got no choice, have I? <laughs> Otherwise, I might burst me stitches. <laughs> I'm best wondering where you are, you know. I'm really tired. Can I just stay here? Yeah, of course you can. I'll fetch you drinking in a minute. Ta. Do you fancy going out tonight to see a film or something? You can't keep running away from this decision. Oh, I've got a chance of a night off, that's all. And I thought you might like some company. So is Louise going to Spain or not? I haven't made my mind up. Well, if you really wanted to go, you better say. She might lose a chance otherwise. Oh, will you stop going on about it? Look, do you want to go to the pictures or not? You can't. Oh, come on. We hardly get a chance to go out these days. Are you supposed to be seeing me? All oh, right. That's if I can get hold of him. His mobile's been off all day. He isn't avoiding you, is he? No. He's just doing what all builders do, avoiding the phone while he plays one job off against the other. Well, I hope he's not playing you off against someone else. No. He really likes me. I really like him. Yeah, no. I've seen the smileys left on your face, and I'm dead jealous. I can't even get anyone to go to the pictures with me. You didn't say what film you wanted to see. Oh, I thought you said you couldn't go. Was well, is it a gangster movie? Oh, ha, ha. This isn't a joke, you know. All you've got to do is tell Louise she can't go to Spain. She's probably a lot tougher than you think, you know. She'll get over it. Oh, I'm just paranoid, that's all. I keep imagining her caught up in something horrible, like a gangland feud or something. Then tell her she can't go. Is that all it was? Looks like. I could have done that. Didn't though, did you? <sighs> oh, it's very kind of your father. I'd have never managed this on my own. Now, his name's Ron Dixon. Would be 12, I think they said. I don't think he's any kind of faith to speak of, but I'm sure we'd welcome a blessing from you. What's that on your arm? <laughs> Luke did it. <laughs> Liverpool Football Club? No, Luke's Football Club. We were just messing about. He was the manager, I was the boot boy. It's a shame you can't spend more time with him. He'd like that. No, don't let Sean hear you saying that, or your mum and dad. Well, I've been working on them quietly. You won't push him too much, though, will you? You know what your dad's like. Well, he's nearly there. It'd be even better if we had some of our own. Mm. Where'd you fancy, then? Luxury yacht off the coast of Mallorca, penthouse flat in Paris. <laughs> How about a loft apartment in New York? Anywhere would be good. Yeah, as long as it's not some minty bad sit somewhere. <laughs> 
palace would do me. Mm, we can't have a loft apartments anyway. We need somewhere with a big back garden so Luke can have a kick around. So is this fantasy futures we're playing here? Or do you think maybe we could have a real future together long term? I think we could, yeah. But the works, <laughs> like kids and that. Yeah, why not? I mean, we could have our own carpets and all. And a couch and, and a stove and a fridge and beds and, and the house, the lot. And mortgage and loan arrangements and bills. <sighs> we just dream in them, Ruth. Why did you have to bring reality into it? It just happened, I suppose. Why it always does. This is him, Father. He doesn't look very well, does he? Someone to see you. What's going on? Am I on my last legs? Right, give it a go. So job done. Right, I'm out of here. Get in the van. Hiya. Really? Hiya. Well, I thought you wouldn't complain. Never came for them. No, of course not. How's your dad? Well, he seems to be doing fine, but I'll tell you what, I didn't know I've got a flight before. How did you cough my blood? I thought he was on his way out on us, but apparently it's normal after an operation like that. I must have been terrifying. Just a bit, yeah. So, have these two been good for you? Yeah, they've been fine. We've just been sitting watching a video. Is that all he have been doing? No. It's not exactly educational, is it? It's only a bit of fun. Oh, right, great. So, meanwhile, all the other kids their age are doing computers and all kinds. Could you have done a bit of reading with them or counting games? They've been in the garden having a picnic. Come on, honey, I'm a time to go. We sang a song, we fed Emma's Teddy, we did stuff normal kids their age do. Harry, Emma, you watch enough television at home? They've only been sat there five minutes, we're tired from playing. And they get enough biscuits at home as well. Jackie, they've had raw carrot in the garden and apple. And biscuits for afters. I haven't let them have biscuits, Josh must have got them out. Look, Rach, I'm not getting that yet, I'm just saying what Max would say, have you seen them? Josh, where's the cast off your leg? I'll cut it off. You know, I'm surprised that they let you go walk about. It's the antibiotics. I'm amazed they've worked so quickly. You don't want to overdo it, though, love. Oh, well, I wanted to see how you were. And between you and me, that ward I'm on, there's nobody under 80. It's so depressing. So I pulled rank. I told the staff nurse I used to be a nurse and said walk about would do me good. I never knew that you were a nurse. Mm, I did my time here when it was a real hospital with real Nightingale wards. <laughs> Had to give it up when our Diane was born. And you never went back there? No, oh, I thought about it lots of times, but things change so quickly. But a waste, eh? You know, I could just picture you as one of those old-fashioned matrons. <laughs> they need one or two of them around here, I can tell you. I mean, some of those nurses are so familiar, they all call me Bridget. None of them call me Mrs McKenna. Wouldn't have happened in your day, eh? It certainly would not. Can I ask you something personal? Depends how personal. No, it's just that, I mean, well, look at the two of us stuck in here like a pair of old crocs. But I don't feel old. Do you feel old? I did until I came in here. You should be on my wood. It's like the queue for the pearly gates. Oh, well, it'll be the fiery furnace for me, I reckon. Especially after all the names I called your mate, the priest. Oh, I'm sorry about Father Thompson. He was just making sure I didn't get lost. It was just a shock of it all, you know. Waking up and finding him there like that. Oh, he's very nice, really. Yeah, but it's all the diseases he's carrying, that worried me. You're not very healthy to me. 
he'll have been everywhere, though, from maternity to the morgue. The unseen germs and bugs. They'll be on his clothes, on his skin. It's a breeding ground, a place like this. I mean, he'll have been going from ward to ward, shaking hands with all kinds. I tell you, it's no wonder infection spread like wildfire. You OK? Just a bit of a twinge. Um, I'd better go back to my ward and have a bit of a rest. Have they, um, told you what the problem is? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not one of them flesh-eating things or, or one of them superbugs. I tell you, they're supposed to be rife, you know, they decimated some hospitals. It's nothing super, I'm glad to say. It's just a plain old infection of my waterworks. What? You're infectious and you're wandering around? That's all I need, isn't it, eh? A block of Jimmy plumbing. Well, who knows? They might be able to do a bypass down there as well. Oh, <laughs> Luke. I think someone wants to play football. Yeah, of course. Why not? Come on, mate. Let's have a look at you. <laughs> Let's get these boots sorted out, eh? Come on. Come in. Hiya. What? What's up? He cut it off when I weren't looking. What? What'd you go and do with that for? Yeah. I, th I thought you might have wanted this back. Never mind that. What about your leg? Well, I haven't cut that off. Look. It's mended. It's magic. I'm back to normal. Great. You're mobile again. What was all that about? I told you I was going to rob a bank. I just never said I was doing it brick by brick. So who's at your phone? Well, the fellow who bought the hardcore off us. He said he was looking for something big, so I found it for him. Well, it wasn't hardcore, it was a building. Mm, it was, yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee, and I'm sorry I've gone on at you. You shouldn't let it get to you like that. I can't help it. I mean, this was Jackie. We've been mates for years. She just stood there talking down to me like it was a piece of dirt. Well, she's married to Toff, that's why. She's like that with everyone these days. Just ignore it. Yeah, well, I felt like telling her what she could do with Harry and Emma. Well, I can't, can I? I need the money. Right, I better go. Well, as long as you know you're in the right, that's all that matters. <laughs> Not to Jackie. All that matters to her are precious kids. And if they're getting a balanced diet from me and the right level of educational experience. Well, you can't blame her for wanting the best for her kids, though. Well, meaning what? second best. Well, no, I just mean, well, all parents think that way. I mean, I'm the same with Louise, and you'll be the same with Beth when she's older. Yeah, but Jackie's paying Rachel as a childminder, not as a dietitian or a teacher. She wants you to do all three, tell her to triple your wages. I just do that. Thanks for letting me have a good moan. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm used to it with our Sammy. Hey, you. Whose was the truck? The fella who wanted the hardcore. Oh, I thought you said you robbed it. I did. He told me to. I'm lost. <sighs> Look, I rob it right, then wreck the building and do one. Like some joyriders done it. He gets a call from the busies. Next minute he quids in. He claims off the insurance company for the truck and then gets the contract to take the rest of the building down. <laughs> Just what he wanted in the first place. A load of hardcore. And what's he doing? <sighs> 300 quid. <sighs> nice one. I could have been splitting it with you now. That's if you would have had the bottle in the first place. Oh, well. You all right there, lads? You've been doing a mucky job, then? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> nice to see them doing on this day's work for a change. Yeah, hey, look, so you're going to look after me in my old age. So you get the kettle on, and I'll put my feet up. Well, here. What's this? The call up fee. A hundred quid? You got 300 quid for the job, didn't you? Only you wouldn't have got that if I hadn't fixed the truck. It's called overheads. How did it go? Oh, never mind me. How was your mum? Oh, fighting back, telling everyone how she could run this place better. She must be on the mend. So come on, what did the police say? 
Same as before. More inquiries, more clarification, you know. You look terrible. <sighs> nah, I'm OK. So is this the last time they want to drag you in? I doubt it. How come? Well, they'll always find something, you know, what they like. They can't carry on putting you through this nightmare. You haven't done anything. Yeah, well, you know what they said. It's, it's just routine. You must have said more than that. Yeah, let's just leave it, eh? I will not leave it. It's ruining your life, this. I said leave it. And I said I won't leave it. And I won't. As soon as I finish here, I'm going down to the police station and ask them what they're playing at. You're not going anywhere near the police. Why not? Because I said so! Yeah. Will you shut up? And stay out of it. And stay away from the police and all. between us, all right? All right, what is it? When will you get it into your head? You are going to need plenty of rest, and you might be glad of my help. What has he got to hide? Do you know? Come on, calm down. I killed her. Who? The moment I killed her. Brookside is back tomorrow evening at 8.30. Next tonight, families coping with children exhibiting anxiety-related illnesses from attention deficit disorder to sudden mood swings in children behaving badly. Dream, that's all. Come on, calm down. I killed her. No, you didn't. I know you didn't. It's just a bad dream. It's all a bad dream. Shall I get you the drink?
What are you doing out here at this time? Can't sleep. Can't settle. The police haven't got anything on you, you know that. They've dug up all that business with your mother. They've got me down as violent. How many fellas have rucks with the wives? You know it was more than that. Well, did you tell them what she was like? Do you want me to? And give them chapter and verse on me wonderful mother. No, don't be soft, you're only a kid. I was old enough. That's typical, isn't it? The bloke's always the one that's down as violent. That's what that cop has latched on to. They know she left us. They know you and Di brought us up. Come on, let's go. Let's go. It makes no difference. I'm the suspect. Shh. You are into it. Lefty, with that sure they the charger or something. What they're trying to do is chip away at me. Wear me down. But what? I mean, the cloth is only missing, you know. Just like the girl from me last school still is. And it's been months on the cloth, girl. But there's no body. Nobody can say she's been murdered. But they're bound to be working on the idea that Imelda Clough is dead by now. Well, that doesn't mean that you killed her. Yeah, but until they prove otherwise, my name's in the frame. She's still alive. I wish they could. She'd let someone know. Otherwise, I'll never get that copper off me back. They'll be pointing their fingers at me forevermore. Sean, it's me. It's just gone half eight. Um, can you give me a call later? I'll be at mum and dad's. OK, um, bye. I mean, for all you know, it could be a murderer. Have you asked Louise what a maid's dad actually does for a living? Well, I can't do that. I mean, she's only interested in buying clothes for the holiday when she comes up here with Tanya. So you haven't told her that she's not going to Spain? <sighs> what am I going to do? Tell her to stay away from the Morans, especially the father. But she really enjoyed it the last time. Mmm, getting shot at in a cafe. Great fun, yeah? Tell her now that she's not going to Spain before her and Tanya turn up and start working on you. Yeah, well, if I do that, she might not come. Please yourself. Right, into the lion's den, eh? Another day with Dr Faceache. I know he's fed up about Gabby being away all the time, but does he have to take it out on all of us? Oh, so you've gone off from then, have you? Text Louise and tell her she's not going on holiday with Mr Big. Steve, get up! Steve! Do you know what time he got home last night? No. Postcard from Ardell. I had some fella on the phone playing hell with me, cos he didn't turn up for a job. <sighs> How can you run a business when you can't even get up in the morning? I've got nothing on till later. How about Mr Tynan from Dovecot? I forgot. What were you doing? I was on the phone going mad as if it was my fault. Sorry. I told him you'd ring him when you got in, but you didn't get home till who knows when. What time was it? I don't know. Half one-ish. Anyway, I'm 22 years of age, you know, not some teenager. Then don't act like one. You can come and go as you like, but I don't have to be apologising to people you've let down. There's numbers by the phone. Shouldn't you be getting to work? There's no rush. Even Mrs Plummer's in France. <sighs> sure, I was so lucky. What are you doing today? Uh, can I go on Adele's computer? I need to uh, do some stuff for school. Of course you can. I'll be late back. I've got to visit my mum in the hospital. Right. You gonna come with me? Uh, I'll... Probably be working. Well, if you get on with your work now, you'll be able to come with me. You haven't even thought about her, have you? I mean, what's she going to think if you don't even take Stay the trouble? will you shut up? Why couldn't you tell us yesterday? Why leave it till now? Well, you're not half as sorry as I am. It's all this to go. I'll be thinking twice about where we get our insurance policy next time. Goodbye. Blood and sand. Give me strength. What's up? That fellow from the insurance who came out to look at the bungalow yesterday. We can't move in because our electric supply doesn't match their standards. It still needs work. What? I watched that electrician myself. There's nothing wrong with it. After all this time. Oh, come on. Let's just move in to hell with them. Any stuff we move in there wouldn't be insured. Not until their inspectors recheck the wiring. We've got nothing in there. We'd be camping out. It's not as though we've got some expensive furniture. Whose fault's that? This is ridiculous. Let's just move in and let the electrician work round us. And what do we do when it gets dark? I'm begging her from taking a chance with candles. Hello, Ron. I was desperate to talk to someone who still had all their marbles. All right, Bridges. <laughs> so, how are you doing, love? Hello? Well, don't be 
so defensive. I was wondering if we could meet. Or well, we need to talk about Luke. No, he's fine. Can you get round to Mum and Dad's later? Yeah, that's fine. I should be back from work then. Now, he's at work. It'll just be me and Luke, OK? All right, bye. Right. Nick's here at last. I'll go and see if he's heard the bad news. You tell me I want that electrician back today. Don't worry. That's what I want, but I know it won't happen. Another week I'll drift by. Do you know it's nearly eight months since the fire? Yeah, but it won't be longer than a few days, will it? And then you'll be in your own home. Yeah, but what'll it be like? I mean, before the fire, Helen, Sylvia... It seems a lifetime ago. A different life, even. Don't you like her? Oh, you can keep that Sylvia. But I do like Helen. I can't help but she, she never turned up, though. She is Ray's daughter. And now he thinks he's going to lose her. Why? Because Sylvia told her that when May found out she was pregnant, he asked her to have an abortion. You're joking. Why didn't you keep him out? Shut the stupid cow. Well, I might not have put it quite like that, but my sentiments exactly. This time next week, I shall be back in my own home. Everything back to normal. Oh, no, you won't. You're going to need plenty of rest for the next few months. <laughs> Don't think so, love. I've got a business to do. That's what you think. I've been talking to the staff nurse on this ward, and she said you are going to need 24-hour attention when you get home. You can't be left on your own for at least two weeks. Oh, yeah? And how does she think that I'm going to earn a living? Like I say, I've got a business to look after. But I thought your Michael was running the laundry service. He's pulling his ways. Oh, sounds like a job for me. But, um, I'm going back to our Diane's tomorrow. Do you want me to check up on him and see that everything's all right? No, 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 it's all right, though. There's uh, no need. He told me everything's fine, you know. Oh, well, he would, wouldn't he? He couldn't even take messages properly when I work for Great Grannies. Well, if it's no trouble, I... I can always chip in and help. Uh, no, 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 love. <laughs> No, no, there's no need for that. When will you get it into your head? You are going to need plenty of rest, and you might be glad of my help. Hey, we always did have a good working relationship, didn't we? Well, yeah, I suppose so. You know, you were talking about the food in here. How would it be if I made you a nice beef stew and brought it in tomorrow night? You'd enjoy that. You don't mind? After I've checked up on the laundry service, eh? Right. you'd want to see him. Yeah, I'm just saying. Now is an ideal. Hi, yeah. Come and see Daddy. What have you been up to, eh? Do you want some tea or something? No, thanks. Come on, let's have a look at you. <laughs> what have you been so shy for, eh? Come on. That's better, eh? So what do you want to talk about? Your access to him. You mean a couple of hours every Sunday afternoon? I was thinking a couple of days every other week. Oh, brilliant. Two days out of every 14. It's nothing. Your new fella will see more of them than I do. I know it's not perfect. It's an insult. I should have him a week at a time. Well, what about work? I work for myself. I can manage. Oh, funny. You couldn't take a week off when I wanted a holiday. You can never afford a week off. We're talking about my son, not holidays. I know, but two days will be more than enough. And you know how much of a handful he is? You'll be glad to hand him back. Look what you've done to me, pants. Give us that. I'll get a cloth. Look, just be more careful with it, will you? <laughs> Look, Daddy's got the rest of your drink. Why don't you go and finish it, eh? I don't want it. We'll get the electrician tomorrow at the earliest. Then we've got to wait for that flaming insurer to give us the all clear. Come on, love, cheer up. We'll be in next week, I'm sure. Isn't it you should be cheering up? All this bright and breezy stuff doesn't fool me, you know. Oh. oh. I just wish that Sylvia hadn't turned up. 
Might have been better if she hadn't. Do you know, I should have told you every little detail, right from the very start, you know. Do you know, I can still remember all those years ago, how upset she was when I asked her to get rid of the baby. I'm reaping my reward now, though, aren't I, eh? Do you know, I was happy as Larry when I got my daughter back. But now it looks as though she's going to disown me. You'll have to make the effort. If you want her back, you'll have to talk to her. What can I say? She thinks I didn't want her. You didn't? So, no. Things were different then. I was only a lad. I was married. Married man. She was pregnant. Oh, I was desperate. Look, it might take time, but you can make her understand. I'm sure you can. I'm sorry I shouted, mate. I've, I've been working too long, but I'll be all right on Friday, yeah? Look, you will let me know if you can't have him Friday, won't you? It's fixed. I'm having him. I'll see you on Friday, then, yeah? She could find some time for us to talk about the divorce. I'm a, I'm a bit pushed at the moment. Well, it has to be discussed. No rush, is there? Well, you said you wanted to. In due course and all that. Look, it takes time and money. The last time you were demanding... Yeah, well, I'm more concerned about sorting things out with our son first. There's plenty of time for all that when he's settled. He is settled. Look, I, I've got to go. We'll see you, Luke. Do you want to No. No, thanks, son. Can you get that? Go on. Is your dad in? Uh, yeah, he's in the kitchen. All right. Just was in the air, you know, thought I'd call him in. Yeah, for a chat. You haven't seen me new pond, have you? No, no, you haven't. I'm choking out with your hands. So how come you're not at work? Are you with the busies again? I thought it was then when you rang the doorbell. Just have the jitters. So have you heard any more? No. What's the matter with you shaking? When I was with the police the other day, they... they dragged up loads of stuff. For what? If I do tell you, it's between me and you, all right? What? Don't even think about telling Leanne. I'm listening. It's completely between us, all right? All right, what is it? It's something that happened a while ago. It's something I'm not very proud of. I'm afraid I'll be presenting Nick with a snagging list tonight before he clocks off. It's all the bits and bobs I'm not happy with the finish of, you know. Never mind the insurance. Oh, come on, love. Cheer up. We'll be in there next week. It isn't just that. It's this year. I feel so unsettled. Oh, no. It's all my fault, isn't it? From way, way back. Sometimes I wish you hadn't won that 3,000 quid on the bingo. Then none of this would have happened, would it? Those candles wouldn't have been lit. We wouldn't have been rowing in the back bedroom while the bungalow was burning down. And Sylvia would have stayed in Iceland. What's it done to us? I wish I hadn't caused you all this hurt. Oh, I'll survive. It's not much when you think of what happened to our Greg and Jason. True. Oh. I'll make it up to you, Jess, I promise. And when this electrical thing's all over, we'll, we'll go out and buy some furniture, yeah? And I'll turn that bungalow into a little palace for you, and we'll have lots of peace and quiet. I can't see our Nicky and Jerome wanting to move back in. Not from what she said in her last postcard. They want their own place now. Oh, well. Nice to drawing in, aren't they? We'll be, be comfortable, won't we? Just you and me on our own. Hey? We'll be Darby and Joan, won't we, eh? Ah. I won't be long. Can you see how the police are putting two and two together? God almighty. I never imagined. All these years, you never told me your own brother. Would you blame me? Yeah, but you. I hardly believe it. Tell me. Then when I'm with that copper, I can just see his mind clicking over. See what he's thinking. Working things out to suit himself. You should be telling Diane this, not me. How can I? You've got to tell her. What does she think? What kind of man will she think she's married? You've still got to tell her. 
If you can't keep a secret like that from her, look, she'll stick by it. I know she will. And the older fort, will you? I think you're done for a pint or two. No. No, I don't want to go. You're going to need it. Especially when you tell her what you just told me. Come for Slash. What did Uncle Chrissy want? Nothing. You going into work? No, I don't feel like it now. Shouldn't worry. The police will soon know Mother's all right. I hope so, son. Oh, damn it. Hello? Oh, hi, hello. What? Hiya, love. Hiya. Have you sorted out that Mr Tynan yet? Uh, yeah, all done. Sorry about that. Your dad and work? Hey, my aunt said they'd gone for a pint with Christy. I thought he might come with me to the hospital. Maybe make up for this morning. Did you hear him? Well, he's fed up of all this Imelda Clough stuff with the coppers. It's just edgy. Do you know he hasn't said one thing to me about that interview with the police? It was just routine, wasn't it? So he's spoken to you about it? Well, you mentioned it. What did he say? I told you it was routine. So why is he carrying on like he doesn't want to see me? Like he's got something to hide? What are you trying to say? That he did have something to do with that kid going missing? I don't know. I'm confused. What do you think? Dad, no way. Then why is he trying to avoid me all the time, going off to bed before me? What has he got to hide? Do you know? No. Are you going to run me to the hospital then? I've got another job on. Don't need to forget it, do you? Why the hell did Louise let him try and contact Richard? I mean, I'm a mother. Calm down and tell me what's happened. Oh, the police down in Surrey found Louise and Tanya drinking lager in some park with some older lads. No. Then they took him back to Mr Moran's and gave him a lecture. So Tanya's dad tried to contact Richard. I mean, why him? I'm a mother. He should have tried to ring me. Hang on, has he spoken to Richard? No, he's off in the Seychelles or somewhere. I mean, Louise should have told him to contact me, not Richard. I mean, why did she do that? Is she ashamed of me or something? Don't be soft. Oh, and now this Mr Moran this flaming gangster has got the nerve to say that Louise is a bad influence on Tanya. Well, there's the go-to-spain problem solved. Oh, no, he thinks I'm a bad mother. That's what he thinks. Well, I'm not having that. <coughs> Hello? I thought you were going to go and see Bridget. I hoped you might change your mind and come with me. I thought we could talk away from here. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got to go to work. Well, before you go, perhaps you could tell me a bit more about what the police were asking you. Well, I've told you before. I mean, it's the same thing over and over again. Are you telling me the truth? Yeah, of course I am. There's something you're not telling me. There's something you're hiding. Well, I'm telling you everything. I've got to go to work. Wait. What's wrong? You never speak to me the way you did this morning. I don't like being a suspect. What do you expect? Is that all? I don't know. I'll be back. Well, of course it's OK. Yeah, I'll be here. OK, bye, love. See you then. Well? <sighs> They're not coming up on the train. Tanya's dad's driving them up. He thought he should come and see me because Richard's out the country. Well, he's not coming here slagging off my daughter, whether he's a gangster or not. He's hiding something from me. I know he is, and my head's in overdrive. If I go abroad, you will come with me, won't you? Just remember, Mr Big's married. Uh, and what's that supposed to mean? Well, you've told me before, powerful men with money, you can't resist them. You didn't ask how your dad was. I came out of there this morning. How was he? Hasn't seen you for three days. I'm not having Louise blamed for leading Tanya astray. Sorry. That's Wednesday's Brookside at 8 o'clock. Coming up, it's your Friday friends on 4. Rachel's going to break the big news about the baby to her scary dad next.
What's going on? I'm trying to make this place look decent. I don't want Tanya's dad seeing it like this. It's my day off. I want her to lie in. And I don't want this place looking like a pigsty when they turn up. He's not exactly royalty, is he? More like some scumbag who robbed his way to the top. Yeah, well, a few hundred years ago, that's all it took to be royalty. Anyway, I don't care who or what he is. I'm not having him saying that my daughter's a bad influence and that I'm a bad mother. You say about wham bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> More like thank you, man. <laughs> nice surprise. Yeah, very. Mm, that's why I jumped the early flight. So, uh, how are you? <laughs> All the better for seeing you. And the look on your face when I jumped on you. Mm. <laughs> I like your hair, it's lovely. Thank you. New hair, new start. You sure? What about the sleeping tablets? You're still taking those? Not for the last three nights. Honestly? Yep. Oh, brilliant. You're not going to be so late for work. Are you going to ask me? You know what I'm talking about. Are you over the whole Dexter business? I don't want to hear his name ever again. It's banned. In here, everywhere, OK? Yeah, well, it suits me. Mm. So are you going in today? No, I uh, phoned in yesterday. I've got the whole week off. Really? Mm. Well, they know him whose name is banned. <laughs> he recruited me, so... I think they feel a bit guilty about everything that's happened. Anyway, the big boss was really supportive. One more week and everything's back to normal. Yeah. Have you still got an inquest to go through there? Yeah, well, I'll face that when I get to it. OK. Sorry about the delay. I had to let Ron know I was leaving. Taxi's waiting. He shouldn't be struggling. No, you need to rest. And when we get home, you're going for a sleep. There's nothing wrong with me. It's you who wants to take things easy. Is it this business with himself and the police? It's worse since I came to visit you. He came on late last night and hardly spoke to me. He walked out this morning and left his breakfast. He's avoiding me, and I don't know why. Well, did you ask him straight out? He won't give me the time of day. He's hiding something from me. I know he is, and my head's in overdrive. I keep thinking he's got something to do with the Melder cloth. Where was he last night? I was drinking with his brother, I think. Why? Oh, they're as thick as thieves, those two, when they get together. Christy Murray's the one you should ask. What do you think? What about our Steve? I couldn't get a word out of him. He's keeping away from me and all. Well, you ask that Christy one. Put some pressure on the little weasel. And remember positive thinking. This mightn't be police business. Remember, he's had just as tough a time these past 12 months as you've had. What with Ardell and Anthony at school and promotion at work, trying for a baby. It might all have got on top of him, you know. Yeah. So did he get off with Sean OK, then? Mm, a bit clingy, but better than yesterday. He must have forgotten about being shouted at. Oh, that's good, isn't it? I know, but seeing him with his little bag and his videos. Yeah, but it's only until tomorrow night. I know, but I'm not sick excited to do him something different, wires off. Stop worrying about him, he'll be fine. Listen, I thought maybe we could do something by ourselves tomorrow, you know, before Luke gets back. What about today? Are you working? Yeah, I am. I didn't manage to swap my shift. I'm sorry. Listen, listen. There is something we could do together today. We've got the house to ourselves, Luke's out with his dad. Oh, Stu, it's in bed up there. Yeah, but he's going to be spark out till at least one o'clock, isn't he? Oh, Ali could be in any minute. Come on, live dangerously. I can't settle here. Even when you stay over, there's no privacy. Tell me about it, Ruth. It's me. I'm used to being by myself and being back with Mum and Dad and everyone. We need our own place. Yeah, well, I need a better job first. I don't even know where I'm going to be working, do I? There's no need to go to South America or Africa, is there? What's wrong with the Northwest? Oh, Ruth, you know I've always wanted to work abroad, even when we were at school. No, but it's such a big step. <sighs> I'll get hold of Christy. Try again. Don't let him give you the slip. Mm. Right. I'm going to love you and leave you. Where do you think you're going? You've just come out of the hospital. I promised Ron I'd look in on Mike and see how the new laundry business was doing. You can't. You need to get your feet up and take it easy. Get that off. I promised Ron, and he's going to be laid up for a long time yet. Anyway, I need another job. Let's see. This is the first step, shall we? You sly you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't forget. Ring him again. Don't overdo it. Oh, you took your time. What? Your dad asked me to pop in. I said I'd, um, cook him something and take it in, a beef stew. 
Right. Have you any beef in the freezer? Um, top shelf, I think. He gets it off one of his butcher's mates. Something nice and lean, not too fatty, otherwise the doctors aren't chasing it. You don't look very organised. Two washers, two dryers, both full, both finished. Yeah, I was just going to do it and you rang the bell. But they take different times for different programmes, weren't you watching? This is a business. I was on the phone, suppliers and the... Ah, uh, so I see. Where are Ray and Jessie? Yeah, I believe their move fell through. Out. I'm not surprised. Anyway, I'll give you a hand. No, no, it's okay. Have you got the meat? Oh, yes, he'd really enjoy that. It's no trouble. You didn't ask how your dad was. I came out of there this morning. How was he? Hasn't seen you for three days. I've been doing all this for him. I'm busy. So I see. Anyway, many hands make light work. Louise has just texted. They've just reached the M62. Let's hope he doesn't get arrested on the Merseyside border. Why, are you all tarted up? I'm not. Oh, well, usually on your day off, you slob around like a bag woman. I do not. I'm meeting Nick. When? Soon. Well, why didn't you better get going then? No. They'll be here in a minute. This happens to be my flat. I like to know who's coming here. You know, his car gets riddled with bullets and he's got the cheek to suggest bad influence. You've got to get this guy sussed out, and so have I. Well, you leave this one to me. I won't let him get away with saying that, whoever he is. You realise how weak he'll be, don't you? I'm not soft. What arrangements have you made for him coming home? It's next week, in case you didn't know. Manage. This work will be too much for him for at least a month or two. He'll need waiting on hand and foot, and you won't be able to leave him on his own for the first two weeks. He'll need someone to help him with gentle exercise. I know all this. Me and Rachel are geared up for it. Good. I'm glad to hear it, love. Right. I'll just get this defrosted and put it in the oven. Yeah. Then I can go on helping you, then. You can't. Why? Uh, it's the lucky. I mean, with all these going, you can't use the oven. Overload. You might burn the fuses, blow the motors and that. Oh. Look, you cook the stew in yours, my dad is going to love it, and I'll be fine now you give me a hand. Uh, well, right, I suppose I should. Um, I'll tell your dad how you're coping. Hello? Oh, come on. But you look a bit more casual and you look like you've got a poker stuck up your backside. Is me makeup all right? Yes. Louise, where's your manner? She should be introducing us. Mum, this is Ted. Um, Mr Moran to you, I think. Ted's enough for me, Mrs Rogers. Oh, well, then, Sammy's good enough for me. Who's this? Oh, this is my younger sister, Kate. Pleased to meet you, Kate. Katie's good enough for me. I can see where that lovely daughter of yours gets her looks. Um, where's Tanya? Oh, we had a bit of a kick-off on the way here. Money for phone cards. <laughs> Louise? No, not your Louise. It was all Tanya this time. It's not the money, it's the principal. Just because she's used to it doesn't mean she can't ask nicely, eh? Anyway, she's having a sulk in the car. Oh, um, right. Would you like to sit down? Nah, I might be stretching my legs after that drive. Do you come from Liverpool? I was born here, yeah. Moved down to Essex in my teens. My mum's still here, though. I'll be calling on her later. Uh, would you like a coffee or anything? Nah, 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 I don't want to put you out. Listen, I thought we could all go out to lunch. On me, of course. Oh, well, yeah, that'd be lovely. I noticed that cafe bar downstairs. What's it like? Oh, I can recommend it. It's part of the group I work for. Really? Would you like to join us, Casey? Um, no, I'm meeting someone. Business appointment. If I'm late, I'll get shot. Pissy. Another time, eh? Listen, love, do you want to pop down to our Tanya? Tell her she can have her phone cards. Should be enough for both of you. Should shut them up, eh? Excuse me. Just... Oh, it's too much. I'm going to give it back. Just wait. Yeah? What do you mean he won't do it? He can't refuse. No, I'm not having it. Enough. If he won't do it, break his legs, whatever. I want him in intensive care, right? Sorry about that. Just jargon, you know. Closing the deal. Hey, Gabby. Oh, hiya. It's your mum 
Dad's having you. When did you get back? Oh, just this morning. I've been doing all the stuff that Gary forgot to do while I was away. Mm. Well, listen, I was going to go to the bar. Such fancy coffee. Oh, I've just got all this. Why don't you come upstairs and make you one? OK. Hey, and I love your hair. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, um, what is it you do, Tad? Uh, property, mostly. Holiday apartments, villas, mostly in the Costas, some in Mallorca. Just get me foot in the door in Tenerife. Oh, hi, Casey. Wanna join us? Um, it's OK, thanks. Why do you say that? I've never met a gangster before. Keep your voice down. Stop staring. See, he's got no heavies with him. If I was a gangster, I could just... Stop staring. <gasps> but we're supposed to be going shopping this afternoon. I need to think about holiday clothes. Uh, I haven't said you're going yet. <gasps> no. Your mum needs to think about it. Thank you. And I'm wondering whether either of you deserve to go after the other day. Aww. It Don't take it as red. I thought we were going shopping. You don't mind Lou coming shopping, do you? Come with us if you like. I've got to work. Pity. If you won't let me go, I won't know what to buy. You'll need a couple of bikinis and at least three dresses for the fiestas. Be quiet, Tanya. Um, well, I'd better go to the cash machine then. Oh, no, 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 forget that. If there's anything she likes, anything at all, it's a present for me and Sheena, me wife. Nice one, Lou. Is there a Harvey Nixon for the pool? <laughs> Don't go spoiling her. Listen, why don't you two go and have a bit of a walk around, eh? Get yourself some chocolate or something. Go on. We need to talk about this drinking business. Now, Tanya never did anything like that. I'm not having Louise blamed for leading Tanya astray. I, I believe that's what you said. It was the heat of the moment. Oh, and I resent you trying to contact Richard. I mean, he's not Louise's dad. He's my ex, that's all. Sorry. Look, uh, they were caught drinking beer with some lads. I mean, why should my Louise get the blame for that? It does take two to tango. I overreacted, I suppose. <laughs> my dad died early. Chronic alcoholism. I never touched the stuff. When Tam was caught drinking, well, you know... Worry. Well, so therefore she shouldn't go to Spain with Tanya? I mean, if she's going to be such a bad influence. No, no. I want her to go. Look, Tam was really unhappy at school till she met your Lou. Me and Sheena were a long way away. Tax deal, you know how it is. I wish. Now, well, she's getting on with her schoolwork. And with Lou as her mate, she's content. And I'm really happy about that. Me and Sheena thought I should meet you, see how we got along. So you take it back, then? What you said? Yeah. Now that I've eyeballed you, Let's just write it off, eh? It's a stupid growing-up thing. I'll think about it. And the invitation for Louise to come out is still there, so... More coffee? Gary prescribe me some sleeping tablets. <laughs> well, like some downtrodden housewife with the GP fobbing her out the door with pills. Oh, I think that's really consider us. Mm, maybe. Are we taking them? Mm, try not to, but it's hard. I just don't seem able to bounce back, and that's what Gary wants. Yeah, but after something like that, it's gonna take time. Yeah, I know that, you know that, but he thinks I can get over it just like that. But Dexter killed himself because of me. The whole thing's come in between us. Yeah, well, you can't let that happen, can you? Every time I shut my eyes, Rob Dexter's there. Gary just doesn't seem able to put himself in my place and see how it's affecting me. I saw you sitting there all cosy with him, so have you saw him out yet? Yeah, he owns property in Spain, holiday apartments or something. And um, what about the money I saw that wedge? Yeah, well, I couldn't ask him that. We could ask him why some loony with a gun tried to kill him. Well, it's hard. And what about the bad influence stuff? Oh, that's sorted. Oh, amazing. If you don't make him explain about that shooting, you let him get away with it. Oh, hang on. Sorry, girl, you don't want that. That's for you. Thanks very much. Euros. Got used to them now. I don't know why I used to knock the single currency. Ideal for people like me. Need a bit of notice before the change, though. Sort out what's under the mattress down south. Um, listen, thanks very much for lunch. I, it was lovely. My pleasure. Pissy can't come shopping with us. Look, if it make you feel better, why don't you come out to Spain with Louise? Oh, I don't think so. Wouldn't cost you. My people would sort out a ticket and accommodation. You could sleep in the garden house with the girls. Oh, so, um, I'll get shot at now. That was a case of wrong time, wrong place. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad people living out there. Immigrants from Eastern Europe, you know. Yeah, well, it's not just from there, is it? I mean, you know, it's Costa del Crime, English gangsters. Some, yeah. Look, come to dinner tonight so we can uh, talk some more. OK. But as long as you're honest with me. 
as long as you don't mind honest answers. See ya. Come on, girls. I just can't get over the feeling that he did away with himself just to hurt me. Do you know what I mean? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm just going on and on. I never even asked how things are with you and Max. How's the new house? The house is fine. All the child minds, it doesn't suit Max. What, Rachel? Oh, yeah. He thinks that we should get a proper nanny. He said that the kids aren't getting the right stimulation, you know, being stuck in the house at Rachel's, eh? And he said that she's giving them the wrong stuff to eat and letting them watch too much telly. She just won't leave it alone. I mean, he's really pushing me to... Well, to let it go. Well, I think I have to agree with him. I mean, it's not just diet and too much telly, is it? Children need to be socialising. It's the start of their general education. I know. And I know it's easy enough to get them into a play school. And I know that Harry could go to preschool as well. But? Oh, well, it's just telling Rachel. Oh, look, I know she's your sister-in-law, but what's more important? Rachel's income or your children? Has he been back? He hasn't, love. He's not at home. He's not at school. Where is he? Have you found his brother? About a dozen times. Nothing. It's not like him. If he's anything like any of the other fellas I know, he'll be back when his belly tells him. Oh, I hope so. Is chicken buy and chips all right for your tea? I'm all right, love. I've had some of this. What's that? It's a beef stew I've made for Ron. Oh, I. Is this the second step? Something like that. <laughs> Look, I'll get your tea before I go. You look all in. Go where? To date Ronnie Stew. You shouldn't be gallivanting around, not after the last week. There's nothing wrong with me. My priority is getting a job and getting back to my own place. Right, I better get off to work. Oh, I wish you didn't. You could have done something nice, got a film or something. I've got a spare hard hat in the boot. If you fancy an evening on the motorway. Oh, pass. Got to make some tea for Mum and Dad and my keep. Yeah, I hate it when you work nights. Yeah, tell me about it. I'm stuck with it for now, though, aren't I? He's going to be all right, you know. Who? Luke. Would you have given it a second thought if he'd been spending time with his dad before the split? No, Well, but... then he'll be OK. Ruth, if I go abroad, you will come with me, won't you? Well, sunning myself in Rio or Mombasa? Of course I will. It's just that I don't want to be one of those absent partners, you know, flying back every six months. You won't be. And what about Sean and Luke? We'll have to deal with that nearer the time. Yeah, but it is a problem, isn't it? You know how hot-headed Sean gets? And if you just land it on him that we're leaving the country... I wish he'd just disappear. I really wish I hadn't mentioned it right now. Hello. That looks interesting. You start a soup kitchen? Actually, I'm taking some decent food in for your father. Oh? You know he's coming home next week. Yeah, of course I do. And you know how you'll have to look after him. Yeah, well, I've spoken to the surgeon. I don't think it's sunk in at number seven yet. What? I don't think your brother realises how organised he'll have to be. I popped in earlier, and I think the poor lad's really struggling with the laundry business. Heaven knows how he'll manage with your father. Oh, well, thanks for letting me know, Bridget. Now we can make sure we're definitely prepared for me dad coming home. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you realised. Um, Dad's sending someone to pick us up in about 20 minutes. Right. Where are you going? Out for dinner with Ted. What? Oh, and the girls. But what's this? He took them shopping this afternoon. So Lou's going to Spain? Well, I haven't decided. Oh, but you're going to dinner with him? Well, I suppose he just wants to suss me out as well. Don't forget your bulletproof vest. Just remember, Mr Big's married. Er, uh, and what's that supposed to mean? But well, you've told me before. Powerful men with money, you can't resist them. What, is Tanya's dad? This and my dad have got nothing to do with that interfering old cow. Yeah, well, she might have been interfering, but Mike, she has got a point. How are you going to look after me, Dad? Well, why is it all down to me? Look, I've just knocked a job off her back. I'm working my backside off here. I mean, you can come and live with you for a bit, can't you? Eh, uh, look, all this laundry is coming out of the health club, the bar and the restaurant. Now, this is my dad's house, but you live with them rent free. Now, I will do my share, but you owe it to him to make sure he's all right. Oh, will you look at the state of this? All broken biscuits amongst Daisy washing. Yeah, well, don't be blaming me. Your kids had them there last. Oh, I've had Ray on me back all day. Should finish in a day or two, though. So where's your next job? I don't know yet. Could be anywhere. Oh, that's the end of us. Oh, don't be soft. Of course it isn't. It just means not meeting up at dinner times, that's all. So where do you think you'd be working? Honestly, I ain't got a clue. Except for a few weeks on the bar in Ibiza. Oh, right, you still going? Yeah, but not for so long, because my dad and that, but 
next week, so I should be off. Right. Listen, you must be due some holidays. Why don't you come with me? In here. My mum's asleep upstairs. Any chance of a coffee? Never mind that. What took you so long? Been around the pubs, haven't I? He's not in Bar Brookie or in the Swan, but Neville at the Pacific Star said he was there till 8 o'clock. Drunk. Said he wasn't. Why is he doing this? Avoiding me, not coming home. Well, he's worried about all this police rubbish, isn't he? You tell me. I don't know what you mean. You've seen him a few times over this past week. I know you have. So what did he talk about? Well, you know, the usual football and work and that. Tell me. There's nothing to tell. You're a liar. Hey, knock it. You're a born liar. I haven't forgotten that phony burglary idea of yours. And I haven't forgotten the lies you and my husband told me over that. And I know you're lying now. So did he tell you? Is he involved in these girls going missing? No, of course not. Has he told you anything about them last police interviews? No. He was telling me everything about them interviews up to this last one, so why is he clammed up now? Why won't he talk to me? You know, don't you? Look, I'm not saying anything, but some things are best kept between a man and his wife. You want to know what's on Marty's mind? Ask him. Don't just go. Is there something I should know about? Talk to Marty. I don't want to know. Being away on an holiday is the best way to get to know each other. It's too early. <sighs> but are you just scared it won't work out or something? I'm not ready, that's all. But you've said it often enough. If Clint hadn't been killed, you'd be living and working there now. Maybe that's why I can't go. You've got to move on. You've said that often enough and all. It's too early in our relationship. But it'd move us on, surely. Look, I know you'd love Tony and Carol. It's hard work, but we still have a good time. Go on. But don't say now, just think about it. I'm sorry. I can't. Well, you might feel different in a few days. I know I won't. Right. Look, if it works out and we're together next year, we can go then. Hasn't he come back yet? But look at the time. He's never done this before. Even his own brother's covering up for him, I'm sure. I can't help it. But I'm beginning to think he had something to do with what happened to him, Elder Clough. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> He's not coming, is he? He's got to go and see your granddad, Ron. I'm sorry, hon. You know my place with the back of your hand, don't you? It's where you used to knock off my wife. Definitely one for me. She's a nurse! Correction. She's a wet nurse. I know all this. No. No, you know nothing. More of Marty's Outburst tomorrow at 8 o'clock, and you can chat to Lindsay McCaffrey, who plays Ruth, live online in a few minutes at channel4.com slash brookside. Coming up next on 4, it's Location, Location, Location. Close. Still no sign. I phoned two hospitals. Oh, love. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to let him reduce me to a nervous wreck. Not when I know he's out on some stupid bender. But it's so unlike him. At least the kids won't have to witness his homecoming. Don't be too hasty. He's been out all night. I haven't slept a wink. Why didn't he ring? You know the kids in Africa? Not personally, no. They sure have some water, aren't they? Do you know what time it is? It's like a... Paddling pool and water games. Be no point with that. Water games, as in super soakers. They have not to fill it up with. Yeah, well, the charity shop will sell it to some naughty little article, and you will have done your bit for charity. 
Where is he? Mm. The shop desk is officially closed. Hello? No, don't like your tone of voice, Mike. Right, you're blowing us out. No, no worries. I'll just buy Josh a gallon of petrol to play with. Uh, forget it, Mike. I haven't got the time. Your dad's not coming, is he? He's got to go and see your granddad, Ron. I'm sorry, hon. Hallelujah! Well, is it Kirsty? Says the milk's hanging. Keep the boys out of my room. Don't forget to take Dawson's Creek for me. Any chance of wiring me some dosh ASAP? Did she mention Peru at all? <laughs> One step at a time. Oh, it's set you up for the day, that, hasn't it? Yeah. My baby girl's alive and well and as self-absorbed as ever. Better tell her dad the good news. Is there any chance of a decent conversation at all? Sorry, showbiz gossip. Which is? Oh, Brittany burped. Pages 8, 9 and 10. <laughs> and what about the news closer to home? There isn't any. Come on, Gabby. I'm OK. Yeah, worryingly so. Oh, I wish you'd stop monitoring me. Look. <laughs> what is it with you? I mean, do you think I'm some sort of emotional lightweight, incapable of looking after you when you're... What? Losing it? No, I was going to say a little bit wobbly. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, how you're feeling. I'm OK. I'm better than OK. I've, I've licked my wounds and now I'm just making the most of a few days off. If you say so. Look, I'll try and find something a bit more edifying, OK? Keep me out of mischief. Now, Doctor, haven't you got some piles to go and push back in somewhere? Fine. Have it your own way. I just think these things are better out than in, that's all. What, the piles? <laughs> Where is he, Mum? Look, I'll ring Joanne and tell her you're burning up. I'll do it. There's a message. Marty. I must have been in the shower. Well, I didn't hear it ring. <sighs> Flippin' heck. Don't worry. Got a delivery. He's gone straight to work. Oh, thank God he's safe. Says he'll try and get home at lunchtime. Well, at least that's something. He probably left that while I was on to the hospital. It's worried out of my mind. Now you get off to work. The post-mortem can wait. <sighs> Don't worry, he says. Right you are, Mart. Unbelievable. 29. Uh, what's the magic word? Goodbye. Please. Thank you so much. I'll stick the kettle on. Oh, great. Got a postcard from our Kirsty. Can we wire us some money from the money tree? <laughs> not any policemen who are looking younger. A win? Nah, he's got no fella's head on an okay body. Oh, I think he's very easy on the eye. Mm. So do my daughters. Did I tell you about my compo fiasco? With Bev? <laughs> He threw a spanner in the works, big time. Travesty of justice, isn't it, Debs? And I'm sorry, but if some quack's telling me I've got six months to live, I'd rather he didn't have a gob full of chewy. Know what I'm saying? I don't think he'd chew in front of the patients. And there's another one who thinks a lot of herself. You give some people a uniform and they think they own the joint. Tell you what, though. That's one uniform I wouldn't want to sniff. All that doing people's feet and lancing boils and getting sprayed in puke. It isn't just dishing out the happy pills and kneeling on trolleys and straddling patients and saving lives. You're not in ER, love! Hiya. Just doing a chocolate run and withdrawal symptoms. Will you stop doing that? It'll annoy the neighbours. How you doing, Josh? That scowl isn't for you. He was supposed to be with Mike today, but he's blown us out again, that's flame and purr. You look really stressed. I'm gonna have to leave him home alone again. No wonder she's devil child. I'll have him, after everything you've been through. He'll be doing me a favour. Or it'll uh, keep your mind off the other thing, you mean? Exactly. Displacement therapy. <laughs> Josh, fancy baking some fairy cakes and feeding the ducks? You what? She's pulling your leg. You know, that thing that you stop plaster around in. <laughs> oh, mind if I knock about with you today? You could have a championship on your game. And you're gonna win. Hey, I don't do any special favours for kids. I fight to the death. You've got no chance. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Swap flats with Bev. What sauce for the goose? I was, uh, was going to call in. Come up, have a gander. 
Nearly finished. That poor old Jackie Dicko. He just can't keep it in his trousers. Ah, Nurse Nightingale. Just what the doctor ordered. Thank uh, you. Strictly a one-off and A. Florence was a white bird. <laughs> What's in up? Very anatomical. You've changed your hair. Yeah. Mm, looks lovely. Thank you. Number seven. Very Charles Rennie Macintosh. <laughs> Dude, he's such a snob. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. We've just slung out the black ash. <laughs> so how was Guildford? Oh, excruciating. Mum mm -hmm. kept wanting to talk. Gary wants to talk. Everyone just wants to talk. Oh dear, here's me coming round for a chat. <laughs> chat I can cope with. So, what's your take on things? Dexter's dead and I'm at least partly responsible. And the fact that I loathe the man doesn't help. Oh, I wish I could say that in the light of him topping himself, I'm determined to suck the marrow out of life, but I'm not. I'm just angry. I hate him for it. Thank you. What for? For not interrupting. And for not saying it wasn't your fault. I was worried about you. Hey. Well, you know. Yes, yes, you know, as... as a neighbour. Oh, not as a friend. Um, well, no, that, yeah, that too. You winding me up? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's that that gets me into trouble. Anyway, no need. Spot a child minding. Brilliant displacement activity. <laughs> so, how was the governor's meeting? No, oh, totally hijacked by Mother Clough, again. Hmm, can well imagine. Yes, they seem to be focusing their search a little closer to home. Marty Murray? Had him in twice now. Poor guy. <laughs> Wait till the lynch mobs kick in. Mm, hopefully it'll be the police who eliminate him, not the vigilantes. You and I know better than anyone that Imelda Clough led Anthony a dog's life. You said we do stuff? Ten more minutes, I promise. The notes from Plummer's interviews with Marty and Diane state that the son was suicidal. I still think that's way too much of a leap. God forbid that Harry would feel suicidal at the age of 11, but if he did, I'd be straight round there and I'd throttle the culprits. Any parent would. If you love your children, you'd do anything to protect them. You've got eight minutes left. I can understand the urge to knock the girl into next week, but murderer? Seven! Not beyond the realms. I can't see Marty Murray as a murderer. Why? Not the type. <laughs> Before you go off the deep end, I'm sorry. Sorry? I'm sorry. No harm done, Mart. I like tossing and turning all night, ringing round the hospitals, and as for being late for work... I said I'm sorry. No props. I'm Joanne's golden girl, remember? At the end of a very long day and a sleepless night, what's a written warning? I had to get my head together. Oh, I made up for you. Don't worry about mine. Don't give it a second thought. I phoned you this morning you were engaged. I was ringing the morgues. There's no place like home. Where are you going? I thought you were dead! Sorry to disappoint you. And your mum's all right with this thing? As long as it's not in a bar or flat. Well, that's quite a U-turn. And I can't do people who've had their hair done. I don't think it's a very good idea, full stop. Here you are. <laughs> do you think she's hostile? Nah, I'm a pro. <laughs> You're scaring me, Marty. Sorry. I'm sorry it's banned. I've got all kinds of things going through my head here. Put us both out of our misery and tell me what's going on. Have you got cancer? Oh, my God. Tell me what's so unbearable that you stop out all night. That you can't even look me in the eye. Chop, chop, blue eye. Come on, mate, we're going in. Oh, yeah? Did you have a good time, then? Hey, oui, uh, I like the pine and stepdad routine. Nice touch. Sure. It's always a pleasure. In fact, why don't you come in, mate? Because we don't even see enough of you. I was hoping for a word with my slag of a wife. Oi, keep it down, will you? It's all right. You'll soon know his mum's a slag. Not seven, isn't it, when kids have got a hold on a bean? We'll put the kettle on, blue eye. Here. Little present. Call it a housewoman. See, Luke had a little accent tonight. I said, I tell you what. 
We'll save that for Dan the man. So the taps aren't working in your house? You know my place like the back of your hand, don't you? It's where you used to knock off me wife. Mm. Me and Jan. I know you hit her that time, and I understand why. There's a bit more to it than that. Just tell me. By the time we had our aunt, we were on the rocks. I always thought it must have been postnatal stuff, you know? I know all this. No. No, you know nothing. I used to step in when I was home. But I was always at school. I was doing loads of overtime. Trying to bankroll there one night out a week. And the catalogues. What about Anthony? I caught Jan shaking him. He was teething. Well, what happened? What did you do about it? I took the baby off her. But the next morning, Jan's in tears. Oh, she's mortified. She smothers him in kisses. It won't happen again. It was depression, it was PMT, it was hormones. The usual. Usual? I can't believe there ever was a second time. I can't believe you didn't just ship out you and the kids. Nor can I. You sound so helpless. Smashing kid. Oh, he's a pain in here. It's any good thing in my life. The only thing me and the slag ever got right. Things seem to have calmed down a bit. Yeah, only because everything's on your terms. When it comes down to Luke, I'm on your side, mate. <laughs> yeah, right. Listen, Sean, in every other respect, I would have said you've acted like a plank. But at the end of the day, he's your kid. End of story. Things calmed down for a while. Brushed it under the carpet. It was complicated. For you, maybe. Not for the kids. When she was loving, she was a great mum. Great fun. And when she was bad, she was horrid. I wanted them to have two parents. She broke Steve's arm. She shook Anthony. Wasn't about what you wanted. I thought they were one-offs. I thought we could get past it. I loved her. Look, I didn't always like her. <sighs> yeah, but I don't always like you, do I? Like now, for instance. Maybe if I started knocking the kids about, you'd have a bit more respect for me. You know what I mean. It was a marriage. A roller coaster. There was a time before we had Anthony when she seemed happier. She started going out more. She was nicer to the kids. I was watching her like a hawk. But that was because she was sleeping with someone else. For God's sake, Marty, where was your self-esteem? I'm coming to that, don't worry. <gasps> Definitely one for me. She's a nurse! Correction. She's a wet nurse. <laughs> you see, she said she hated herself for cheating on me. That she still loved me. And that she wanted to be a better mum. I thought that she could change and that I could help her. And? We threw everything into making it work. Played happy families. Then she got pregnant with our aunt. And we both thought that we were out of the woods. You brought another child into that violent house. What? Should we have got rid of it? It's your usual solution. You're an absolute rock. Go on. I knew there was trouble brewing when she was pregnant with Aunt. She hated it from the off. She said she felt ugly. Hated him kicking. Said it was all my fault for putting pressure on her to breed like a rabbit. Fancy another brew? I feel like I'm keeping you, you know. I'm on late. Oh, they're another place, eh? Very nice. I bet you don't know who's wanted to kiss first, Debs or Alan's. Yeah, well, me and Ruth want to get a place of our own. Luke can stay in both. Oh, is that right? 
I reckon custody should be 50-50. Custody? We're not divorced yet, mate. Just a figure of speech. You don't want him, do you? Too much like hard work. He's your kid, Sean. He should be with you. Once more with feeling, eh? Listen, skit all you like. No way should Luke suffer. Nice model code. Home wrecker. Listen, mate. I was on the scene way before you. Yeah, well, she married me. College boy. And I'm always going to be around like a bad smell. Make sure I do the right thing by Luke, OK? Hi, Sean. Mrs G. Hello, gorgeous. So, what's going on? Ah, just Danny Boy here. In training for stepdad of the year, you know. There's plenty of you to go round, isn't there, Tiger? Well, Sean brought us a prezzy. I told you, didn't I? Here for you and Ruth, then. Oh, did he wet the bed? Must be all the excitement. Is that what you call it? Look, you don't have to go. No, I've got things to sort out. Luke, get Dan to read you the story. He's been to college and everything. Bye, love. Take care. Everything OK? Yeah, it's OK as they're going to get, I guess. Just got to roll with it, haven't you? Put these in the machine. So you're calling me a liar? No, what I'm saying is Leanne Powell isn't the most reliable of witnesses. Give me a hand. Ah, now, you see, that nice and here is water on the knee. Only higher up. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. Gabby, Josh. You're in there, Doctor. I use that term loosely. Hey! I'm back in! Believe me now, eh, Doc? Gabby, you keep him under control, all right? Why is she playing her? Oi! This displacement lock is sorely underrated. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me she'd rejected Anthony? That she was violent with the kids? Why do you think? Because I was ashamed of myself. We've been married nine years. How come Flaming Albie knows more about me family than I do? Because he saw me badges of honour. How do you mean? Scratches. Bites. The old black eye. The tuft of hair missing. See, there's only so many times you can say you'd tripped over the dog. She battered you. You and your children. <sighs> Do you know what it cost me to tell you that? You can more than hold your own with a gang of fellas. So how come a woman can pull clumps out of your hair, shake your baby, break your son's arm? Because she broke my spirit. Oh, don't go all Oprah Winfrey on me. It won't wash. I'll tell you one thing. Jan's fists have got nothing on your tongue. Great. You'll probably stick around for another 50 years then, won't you? I loved her. And just like a battered woman who sticks by her fella, if you love someone, you think you can change them. You start to think it must be your fault that they lash out, that you've... You must have done something to annoy them, that you put something back in the wrong place. And how many batterings did your kids take before you remembered you were actually born a man? Can we do it again? No. Just one. Go on. No way. Come on, we'll get an ice lolly. Lolly ice. <laughs> Only Liverpudlians call it that. You're from Liverpool, aren't you? I'm a southerner. We'll get an ice lolly. Lolly ice. And then we'll have a kick about in the park. Gabby! Aisha! <gasps> Touché. For heaven's sake! The savers are still in town, I see. Bladder syringes. Used ones, unfortunately. Eee, full of wee! Don't worry, Josh, it's sterile. Very edifying. It'd be handier if you were a vet, love, because you're married to an animal and you work with an animal. No offence, like. And, hey, they're for paying customers only. Well, I suppose they did want to put a smile on your face anyway. Never thought I'd see you and Sean taking tea together. You only stayed to wind me up. Did he succeed? Not really. Must be hard for him, though. I am with his wife and his son. I thought you did well today. He's going to chin me, you know. Do I look stupid? You see, I'm not trying to turn Luke against him. I think that we should share Luke 50-50. I know you do, love. I know you put Luke's happiness first. That's why I think you and Ruth will stay the course. <clears throat> Try and understand. I gave Jan an ultimatum when she was going to go for our Steve again, and... Well, the cops came out. They could see that we'd had a pop at one another, and they just assumed that I'd started it. This woman copper looked at me like I'd just come in on her shoe. Maybe I did. Oh, spare me the self-pity. Just give me the facts. 
I told her I'd report her to the police and the social if she didn't go. Fact. I tried to keep this family together for as long as possible until it became too dangerous for the kids. Fact. And when you were satisfied you'd given it your best shot with Jan, you had a scout round to line up a shiny new stepmom. Fact. You what? There was me thinking it was like an episode of the Waltons. You've lost me. Quite possibly. Die. You needed someone to put you back together again. Yeah, I suppose so, but that was only a byproduct of falling in love with you. And when Dad was wet in the bed for years, it wasn't because you missed a real mum, which I tortured myself with for years, thanks very much. It was because she was worried a real mum might come back. Well, maybe. I don't know. I know. I thought your children were sad when I met you, hankering for the mum, but they were battered. You were battered. Battered because you stood by and did nothing. When you shouted a bit louder, it'll go through the wall nicely, that will. That's the nub of it. What will everyone think? I only care what you think! I think our vows were a sham. I think you're a spineless coward to put yourself first and your children last. And I thank God I'm not carrying your baby because I don't know if you'd lay down your life for it. How could you? I think... Ty, stop it, please! I think you saw me coming. You'd have preferred it if I'd had cancer, wouldn't you? Kept a lid on this for nine years. What else don't I know? Well, I swear I didn't kill him out the cloth, if that's what you think. Of course you didn't. You haven't got the bottle. Oh, and you reckon I'm a revelation? Bleed not die. Well, gather round, churchgoers. Saint Di's a walking miracle. She survived the last 38 years with a swinging brick for the heart. Get out, Marty! I'm going upstairs for a bath. Do you want to come and hold me head on that? That one of Jan's party pieces was it with the kids. Oh, you're sick. I'm sick. Get out. Oh, for God's sake. Get out, Marty! Die! What? What is a big man? Can't get the words out. Maybe a bit of fresh air will clear your mind. Gangster, Sammy. I've ruffled a few feathers in me time, granted. Flame it out, officer. It's only a roll of carpet. No, what I don't think I might realise is how frail my dad's gonna be when he gets out of hospital. It's going to be a long haul to get him back to full health. What exactly are you looking for? If you can ask you to bear with us, this may take a while. What's gonna take a while? If you or someone close to you has been affected by domestic violence, the Channel 4 staffed helpline is open for the next two hours. Call free on 0800 0288 444. Well, next, it's celebrity wedding hitch-ups.